Welcome. This is item number three from the released 2014, uh, spring 2014, seventh grade TCAP test. Um, the question said, by the way, this question is a long way to go to get to the equation part. It's almost like this type of question is why you should do really well in the TCAP, just so you could destroy the test that somebody like this would make whatever. Anyway, Paul drove a total of 348 miles on Monday. He drove the first 52 miles before he stopped to fill the tank of his car with gasoline. His car averages 37 miles of driving per gallon of gasoline. The equation below can be used to find G, the number of gallons of gasoline Paul used after filling the tank, and then they give you the equation. If they give you the equation, you should probably highlight it or something, circle it, so you know where to go from. All of this is just to tell you how they came up with this. And really, to the question, doesn't really matter. They're just trying to create a context to do an equation. But basically, the thing means he drove 348 miles. He already spent, he drove 52 miles before he added any gas to his car. The 37 gallon thing will tell you, OK, um, how many gallons of gas he'll need to get this 348 miles if he already did 52, and then he gets 37 miles to the gallon. So times g that's why it's there but it's kind of meaningless anyway i'll shut up about meaninglessness and talk about the problem itself i'm going to do this one uh, i'm going to solve this one in a normal procedure first and then i'll show you uh, the other way that you could work it and maybe save yourself time i don't know it's set equal so what we're going to do is always draw a line down the equal sign it helps me organize my brain then i'm going to figure out where the variable is i'll usually like identify it in some way. From here, I just need to start moving things. I'm trying to get G by itself, right? It's kind of like when you're screaming, get out of my room, that kind of thing. Well, get out of my room. So we're going to get everything out. The furthest thing away from G needs to go first. So I need to get rid of plus 52. So I'm going to subtract 52. I know it's subtraction just based on the relationship between it and the variable. It's g plus 52, so I need to subtract. Don't divide here. It's not touching g, which would indicate multiply, so you just subtract. So 348 minus 352 gives you somewhere in the old uh, minus 52. I don't know if I said that or not. 296. I might have said 352, but I hope not. If I did, I fixed it. So this becomes 0. You just bring down 37g. Now we're going to deal with divide. The relationship here is on this of these two, the letter and the number, is multiply because they're touching. If hamsters touch, they multiply. If you've ever had a male and a female hamster as a kid, you'd know that you'd have a billion hamsters in just a few weeks. So if they're touching, they're multiplying. So to get rid of multiplying, because we're doing something to the other side of the equation, I need to use opposite operations. Opposite of multiply is, of course, divide. So I do 296 divided by 37 and I get a final value of 8. So 8 gallons of gas. All this to just do this. What else could you do? The answers are given to you. It's a multiple choice test. So if I could just figure out something that I could substitute for G using the appropriate operations, I wouldn't have to go through the process of solving the equation. I would probably go through solving the equation just because it's easier to do it that way, and I hate pressing buttons all the time. But if you're, you know, kind of a calculator junkie, this is your time. Your moment has come, finally. So um, I'll only worry about this side of the equation because I know that the answer I'm trying to get it to equal is 348. If I can find something that makes this equal to this, I get that perfect equilibrium of math that I'm looking for. So 37 parentheses, I'd try the first one first. Why wouldn't you? You start from the bottom. You try 15, for instance, because we know it's 8 already. Just make sure everything's typed in correctly, hit enter, and it's 607. If I substitute it in, it's supposed to equal 348, so I know this isn't the right answer, so I'd mark it out. But to save time of spending forever doing something you already know the answer to, I'll just go ahead and substitute in 8. Don't say plug in. Math teachers are starting to go nuts over that. Even though I'm a math teacher, I still do it. Hit enter. 348. So when I substituted it in, I'd end up with 348 equals 348. 
perfect harmony in the mathematical world and exactly what an equal sign is supposed to mean and thus it makes the statement true. So your answer to this one is A. So choose your own adventure on what method that you choose to do. If you have low stamina and you can use a calculator and you have one, you might want to try just doing it this way for now and then work on practicing your skills for this because you will need it as you move forward uh, to be able to solve the equation without just substituting it in. But you know, some people have test anxieties and I want you to do your best to, you know, sort of make sure that you beat this test for giving this much information for something like just giving you this. But that's it. Done.